Now then. Oh, a man approached them. Still breathing heavily from their fight, Owen barely managed to wave a greeting at the Kingdom Soldier. Yes, we're back into friendly territory, who lumbered towards them. It's Finn. Have we met you before, Finn? You, you look a bit old to be to be huffing and puffing about in this weather, you know, don't you? Look, look, in that head, look, look at your wig. Old face, but shiny blonde hair. Doesn't go together, mate. Boy, you're just about the luckiest horse son I've ever laid eyes on. Oh, in his nobility, he's not a horse son. You'll end up in dungeons if you're not careful. If we hadn't heard the commotion down the pass, I think those goblins would have been having noble stew about now. Nearly took out your friend here. What? They didn't. What? what are you talking about? Nearly took out your friend here until I seen that he appeared to be fighting at your side. Oh, he nearly took out Gorath until uh, yeah. Now I don't know what. To, no, no, I don't know what you think you're doing in the North End with these Moridal. It is very important that you take us to Prince Arutha. It is. What? The gold has gotten to you, boy. What makes you think I'm going to take Talma from my duties and trot your behind out of Crandor? I don't know. Prince Aruth isn't in Crandor. He's likely still stationed with his Crandorian lancers just outside of the Dimwood near Sethanon. We need you ex to escort us to his camp. Why would he be there? And why would he want to see a boy in a Moridal? The prince just sent us to spy on them. All right. They'd never suspect us, Grony. Nineteen. You're not nineteen. Thirty-five if you're, a, if you're a day, mate. Look, grey hair, see? Obviously. Have you thought... Have you thought about swapping swapping wigs with Flynn? That would be much better. What these what these people have put you in those costumes and were thinking, I don't know. They never suspect us grown 19 year old boy in a Moridal, so that's why he sent us. We have information about a planned attack on the kingdom and it's vital we get this information to him. How do I know you're telling the truth? You don't, but if you don't take us and the Muridal over... Oh, hang on a minute. But if you don't take us and the Muridal over a North Ward, don't you really think you're going to be able to sleep with, to sleep with yourself? We don't... It's all getting a bit unsavory. I have to give you one thing. If you're a gambler, you sure don't bid low. Come on, let's get moving. The Dimwood's hell and back from here, and the Prince won't want to be kept waiting. Let's move. Yeah, and you're not getting any younger, are you? Um, have you got your Zimmer frame? Have you? All your tablets. Yeah, uh, you, you, you've got your thermal underwear on, have you? Keep warm, because like, it's cold, it's, it's snowy, yeah. Just get us the hell out of here, Lieutenant. Oh, sorry, I'm English. Just get us, get us the hell out of here, Lieutenant. The sooner the better. Right. What now? Gareth. Evaded capture, and at last we were accepted by your guards at the Inkledil Pass. The journey south to your camp here outside the Dimwood took many days, but we moved with great haste as our message is vital. Really, we've not seen this sort of thing. Oh! Yeah, yeah. Very interesting day. Oh, it's Ruth speaking now. Very interesting. I can't do a different voice, though. You've, you've had it. Very interesting tale, but how do I know a word of it is true? How can I believe that this scroll you have given me is a general article and not a forgery term to write out again? What scroll? Did we pick up a scroll from somewhere? I was very explicit with you before, Gareth. I refuse to act until I, I have word from Signor James. Perhaps James had it at the end of the last chapter. He told us to give you a message, but it's odd, sire. What exactly did he say? He said to tell you that there's a party at Mother's, and a good time will be had by all. Gods, Laurie and Jimmy used that phrase years ago. Who's Laurie? Jimmy's Locklear, old Heather, who we haven't seen for ages now. Oh, I miss him and his hair and his moustache. Ah, oh, he dies his hair, you know, Locklear. James told us. Anyway, all's right then. James has just saved the pair of you your necks and me a good portion of grief. Now, I'm settled down to the matter of finding out what Delicate is thinking. If this report is correct, then the best force he could muster would number at the most 2,000 warriors. A pitiful spit in the eye for a castle assault. You believe he has something else in mind? Undoubtedly. As James indicated in his brief note, it would take some spectacular strategy on Delican's part to take the castle, and honestly, he has never displayed that kind of wit. We faced him before when he was still a field captain from Amandamus. Wherever he is going, he will no doubt hit fast and run for high ground. Now we have to establish where that high ground is. Shall we accompany you to North Warden? 
No, I have a much more important task for you, though I doubt you will find it as exciting. I need you to return to Crondor immediately. Inform Master Magician Pug of the situation. Considering his tactics, I have a feeling delicate and may have a few surprises in store for us. If that bastard brings anything magical to bear, I want to know what it is and how to counteract it. You leave immediately. Well... Oh! The end of the chapter! When Rivers Run Blood, Chapter 5. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to say that in a more dramatic voice. When Rivers Run Blood. Anyway, I need to ring. Uh, James' breath emerged from his lips as a frosty white cloud. Below below him, what? Senior Lockley. Oh, I thought he was going to say that. Oh, God, that was in the bedroom, must have Below him, Senior Lockley had negotiated Scribbush as he worked his way up the wild ending mountain path. He cursed expansively as the thorn bush caught him in the chinks of his leg, leg guards and he paused to throw his friend an exasperated frown. James smiled, then turned to look out over the snowy peaks that marked the boundary of Meridor territory. Five hours after arriving, arriving at North Warden, Baron Gabbard had called both he and, he and Lockley into his meeting room. While worried about James' story of Night Hawks, he was far more concerned that his magical advisor had not reported back from investigating possible moral activity. With a large band of the Dark Brothers approaching his castle, he feared that the old magician might have fallen into enemy hands. And, and so reluctantly, he had asked the two seniors to finish Patrice's job. Luckily, we arriving puffed. Luckily, arrived puffing, his face haloed by mist. I thought I was going to have to come down there and carry you up, James said, grinning. You shouldn't have stayed up all night with that serving girl. She was probably dying his hair again. I didn't expect to have to get up at the crack of dawn, Luckily growled, yanking a, yanking a twig from his chainmail. Mountain climbing and armour did not mix. Suddenly, the two seniors reeled to the sound of a horrible mewling. Patris. And if it weren't bad enough, I had to chase you. You made me get rocks in my best shoes. I'm blistered. Now how mad I get when my feet hurt. I get river bottom muds. I get river bottom muds sucking badger whacked mad. Who's that? Is he. Hang on, hang on. I can't point because there's no mouse cursor at the moment. That bloke on the left is obviously Patris. But who's the one on the right? It's supposed to be James or. or. or Heather, I think. But. Um, it looks. doesn't look like either of them. Excuse us? James's hair doesn't look relatively sensible in this, does it? It's grown. This must have. This, the, they must have digitised this particular picture sometime after the last one. Anyway. Go away! Oh no! Oh no, it is. That's, that's why it doesn't look like James or Thing Robbie, because, uh, because it's a Moridor. So, yeah, go away. I'm busy right now agitating this here Moridor. Begging your pardon, but I am Senior James, and this is here is Senior Locklear, whose uh, sister was in Dynasty, you know. We have been sent by the Baron Gabbard to find... Why, why is he... Why have you got this weird speech, speech pattern? We have been sent by the Baron Gabbard to find you. You are his magical advisor, aren't you? Just Patras, please. I don't care to title as much. Glad to meet you. I've just been trying to get some information about these Moridol. They've been getting too close to the castle and it was making my tongue itch. Man can't get respectably eaten that away. What? Have you learned anything about the attack? Only that there's six companies of them out creeping in the woods somewhere, but I don't know exactly where yet. I think they've got their own magicians too. Magicians? The Baron will be sorry to hear that, I'll wager. We need to return to the castle. Which way would be quickest? North Warden. Well, it's that away. Chapter 5 When Rivers Run Blood. When Rivers Run Blood. Defend North Warden. Hello. It's an old bloke in his, in his night clothes with his little nightcap on. <gasps> it's lucky. What's he got? Are you slagging on to all this crap we, we had at, um, at the end of chapter 2 when it was the last time we saw you? And who are you? What have you got? You haven't got much, have you? Five days rations. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. This spyglass. Oh, I'm the spider. And we don't need that anymore. And look, we've been trying to sell these for ages. Yeah, oh dear. Memories, memories. Oh, Locklear. Locklear, where have you been? You've not been at the hairdressers, that much is obvious. Yeah, I wonder what spells this bloke can cast. Let's just, uh. 
Union allows Caster to read Maradol. Hmm. Caster can send a stress. Yeah, we're going near the eye of his hub. Caster can sense vessels. Right, ships. Ships, I can sense vessels. Um, I just sort of open my eyes and I see them. Yeah, on the water. Well, anyway, I'm not going to start a new chapter now. I think that I'll do for the uh, for this session. Uh, uh, so next time we come back, we've got James back. We've got uh, Heather back, and we've got a weird old man in a white, uh, well, out in his nightgown and his and his nightcap. But it takes all sorts to make a world, doesn't it? Anyway, especially a strange, twisted world like this one is. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye, and I will see you next time. Hopefully, when I've had a bit more sleep. <laughs>